Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to give our first introduction to taxicab geometry. So we, in the last video, we talked a little bit about Euclidean geometry, and we talked about the way we measure distance there. And taxicab geometry gives us another way of having a geometry very similar to Euclidean geometry in some ways, but a very different in other ways. So imagine you're in a city with only north-south avenues and east-west streets. For example, large portions of Manhattan and New York City. Since there are buildings in the way and not being Cretonians, we can't fly through or over them. We have to travel by the streets or sidewalks. So if we want to go from the corner of 1st Avenue and 3rd Street to 4th Avenue and 7th Street, then we have to travel three blocks west and four blocks north for a total of seven blocks. A crow or Superman could fly over obstacles and reach the same distance destination only traveling the same distance as five blocks. The as the crow flies distance is the distance as measured in Euclidean geometry, where, whereas the as the taxicab drives distance is the taxicab distance. So that leads us to the following distance metric. Taxicab distance between two points with the coordinates x1, y1, and x2, y2 can be measured with the following distance formula which just adds the horizontal change and the vertical change. Delta X or horizontal change is X2 minus X1 and Delta Y, Y2 minus Y1 is the vertical change. Do the absolute value of those two things to make sure that they're positive and then add them up and that gives you the distance between the two points as the taxicab drives, the taxicab distance. Uh, here's a picture of it here. So actually I'm going to go to uh, GeoGebra for a minute and this is a basic GeoGebra setup so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on the coordinate grid because taxicab geometry is always in relationship to some coordinate axes whether they're actually pictured or not they probably should be pictured uh, we can turn the grid lines on if we want or not and so we have this so I'm going to take a uh, fake take two points here and we want to find the distance between them so in Euclidean geometry we're taking a line segment from here to here and this is what's measured whenever I click up here and say the distance between or the distance from one point to the other is that distance and that is the what's what's called the that's the Euclidean distance now let me see if I can show you how this uh, this works. Let's make a uh, a parallel line through this point parallel to the coordinate plane, coordinate axis, and parallel from this point through the other one. Let's find the point of intersection right there. Oh, I think I missed. Yep, I missed. Okay, one way I can be sure that I don't miss is to use intersection like this. Okay, and then I'm going to hide these objects. And I'm going to draw in some line segments. And if I measure those as Euclidean distances, uh, the horizontal distance between those uh, two points, how far we're going sideways here, horizontally, and then how far we're going vertically. Those distances are measured the same whether we're in Euclidean geometry or taxicab geometry. Now, um, let me let me just for for the sake of illustration. Oh, let me show you something else. Let me go to. Uh, Let's go to view and show the algebra view here. Okay, and so we've got some things here. I didn't need to see that right now. Okay, so we're showing some different segments, some different points. I can actually go to here and force this to be a particular point. Let's say we force this to be the origin. Let's try that again.
Okay, that's going to move that to the origin. And then I can uh, move this other point around, let's say. And let's say I go uh, four to the right and three up, for example. Then the Euclidean distance is a distance of five. Now we see that by the Pythagorean theorem. So if we take CB and square it, and uh, so let's go down here, let's input something. So if we take the distance CB, which is Okay, I could actually write it this way. The distance from uh, A to C, that's, that's the horizontal distance, and then square that plus the distance from B to C, square that, and then I want the square root of all of that. That's going to give me the Euclidean distance. So there it is. There's the same formula. Notice that's the same as this distance from A to B. So if I move B around, or if I can move A around as well, that, that those two, you know, these two numbers here stay the same. So that's the Euclidean distance. But what would the taxi cab uh, distance be? Okay, well, it would be the 4 plus 3, so I can work out that as well. So let's work that out. Absolute value. I think ABS will do that. Yeah, ABS of the distance from A to C. Okay, or I could do I actually just do it with, with coordinates like this, might be even better. Let's do absolute value of uh, the the uh, the x of b minus the x coordinate of a. So that's going to be the four plus the absolute value. Oh, let's get the outside the absolute value plus the absolute value of the y-coordinate of b minus the y-coordinate of a. Okay, and if I find that, that distance, that's a number, that's this one right here. Whoops, that's, I got a typo. I should have said the y coordinate of A. There we go. That's the, that what we've got right now is B is the uh, taxi cab distance. So, for example, here we're going three here and plus two more here for a distance of five. The, tax, the, the Euclidean distance is always going to be smaller than that or the same. It'll be the same if you're going only horizontally or only vertically. And we can work that out. So this gives us something that we can work through here. All right, now let's look at something else. We can take this and let's go over here and create, I'm gonna create some text. So B is this taxi cab distance. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do um, distance t for taxi cab distance, and I'm gonna call that. Go down here and say that's gonna be b. And so there's our taxi cab distance. Call it taxi distance. There's different things we could do. I just named it something for the moment. And so no matter where we move point A or point B, now the taxi cab distance will be uh, demonstrated. A doesn't have to stay at the origin. I can move that around. Okay. Now, 
uh, I can go one step further. I can go down here and create a tool. I want to create a customized tool. No, that was the toolbar. I don't want it in there. Uh, create a new tool. That's what I meant to click on. And the output object is going to be this thing here. And our input objects are going to be point A and point B. Right, That's it says it's the correct thing. And uh, they're in this order. Click A and then B. It really doesn't matter which one you click first. And then I want to give this a name. I could call it taxi cab distance. Okay, I can say I could write a tool help, click on two points or something. I could give it an icon. Worry about that later, but I can finish this up. And now this new tool is created, which is right here. So now if I create two points, any two points, I can click on this tool, then click on the two points. And uh, let's see. It is now one of these is yeah, it's, it's jumping to a spe specific spot there. But so one of these, let's look at this, move this one around. Moving this one changes this number right here. And this one is changed by moving one of these two points. Okay, so we can get a, um, we can create a new tool that measures the taxi cab distance. Okay, and now if we want to maybe hide the algebra view so that we don't have to look at that, we now have a, a the taxi cab distance between two points. Okay, so now this idea of just going up and down streets and avenues is going to motivate this particular distance metric. Okay, three and a half blocks this way, three blocks this way, six and a half is the is the distance there. There it is, taxi cab distance. Even though Euclidean distance as the crow flies is shorter. Okay, so we're going to call this distance AB. It's AB for Euclidean, it's AB for, for taxi cab depending on which geometry in. If we know which, which geometry in, we'll just call it AB. If we don't know for which geometry we're talking about, then we'll do AB sub E for Euclidean, AB sub T for taxi cab distance. Okay, now the motivation was just going along streets and, and avenues, right? Just going north, south, and east, west streets. But we don't always have to be at the corner of a grid, and we're going to allow ourselves to actually go along this path, but we're just going to measure the distance like we would here with this taxi cab distance. So even if we had, say, a point here, and uh, let's measure the taxi cab distance from this point to this point. And notice that even though we can travel along that way, we can still measure the distance <clears throat> the way we just did with the taxi cab distance. So once again, let's just review real fast. This distance across the bottom is delta x. This distance going up here is delta y. If we square those two and add them up and then square root, we get the distance across here with Euclidean geometry. If we just take the absolute value of these two distances and add them, we get the taxi cab distance. So it turns out that Euclidean, okay, um, sorry, what, what is a line segment? So a line segment intuitively ought to be a path of shortest distance uh, between two points. Well, actually, there's lots of different paths of shortest distance. One is to, uh, say, between points A and B, one is to go from A over here directly to C, and then up, that's a path of uh, length six and a half. But there's also a path that we can actually go straight on this line segment. That's another path, but it's also got a length of six and a half. 
In fact, there's lots of different paths of shortest uh, length. All have the length 6.5 as measured by that taxi cab uh, distance metric. Okay, so since one of those is a Euclidean line segment, we're going to take that, that, that Euclidean line segment to be the taxi cab line segment. Of course, putting those end to end and extending gives us a, Euclidean, a, a taxi cab ray, which is the same thing as a Euclidean ray. And going extending in both directions, infinitely long, gives us a taxi cab line, which is the same as a Euclidean line. So in taxi cab geometry, points, lines, rays, and we're going to get to this later, but even angles are the same thing as your Euclidean counterparts, and we're going to even measure the angles the same as we measure them in Euclidean geometry. But lines, but links and line segments, anything to do with distance, is measured differently in Euclidean and taxi cab geometries. So, once again, we will relax the condition that we have to be at specific points along streets and avenues. We will remove the buildings and streets and allow points in the plane and taxicab geometry to be exactly the same as the points in the Euclidean plane. However, we will use the taxicab distance metric, sometimes called the Manhattan District metric, that we just talked about above, regardless of where the points are in the plane. So we use the idea of traveling along streets and avenues only to motivate the taxicab distance metric, but we will not restrict our motion to only following vertical and horizontal paths. Now we can actually walk directly from point A to B following the Euclidean line segment, but in taxi cab geometry, the distance is still the same as if we walk from A to C and then to B, uh, 11 units in, the, in this picture right here. Uh, we always want a line segment to be a path of shortest distance between the two endpoints. However, in taxi cab geometry, the length of many paths from A to B will result in the same this taxi cab distance, 11 units in that picture, but no path will have a shorter length. Among these multiple paths are the, are the ones we discussed above, but since it turns out that the Euclidean line segment with endpoints A to B is one of the paths of shortest distances, we will let that be the taxi cab line segment and in a similar manner, all straight objects, lines, line segments, rays, and other subsets of lines will be the same in both taxi cab geometry as in Euclidean geometry. Therefore, in taxi cab geometry, points, lines, planes, line segments, rays are all the same thing as the Euclidean counterparts. Again, this is getting ahead of us a little bit, but angles and angle measures are also the same as in Euclidean geometry and our treatment of taxi cab geometry. However, anything that depends on length, such as the length of line segments and the shape of circles, will be different in taxi cab geometry and Euclidean geometry because of the different distance metric. In one of the homework tasks for this week, my students will be asked to consider what shape a taxi cab circle has. Next video, we'll come back and introduce a little bit about spherical geometry.